Welcome friends of the channel and enthusiasts of heavy equipment. The time is now. I have been wanting to do this video ever since LEGO announced they were going to do a Technic kit of the Caterpillar D11 Dozer. It's taken me and a friend a little over a year and a half to build this massive nearly 4,000 individual piece LEGO kit. But it is built, it is functional, we'll go over the details, I'll show you some of the functionality, I'll show you how the uh, controls work on a smart device. So stay tuned if you're into Legos, if you're into heavy equipment, uh, or if you're just into impressive feats of mechanical modeling, then this video is for you. So, a little bit of backstory. This is the LEGO Technic uh, Control Plus Caterpillar D11 Track Type Tractor or Bulldozer. Um, the Technic series is not for the beginner LEGO modeler, let me tell you that. Um, so don't pick this up as your very first LEGO kit you've ever done since maybe you were a kid. However, that said, this is definitely geared towards the adult collector. In fact, the box actually says ages 18 and up. Item number 42131. I believe you can still buy these from lego.com at the time that I'm filming this, for video, uh, this review video. Uh, but I do believe that they will become a closed model very soon. Therefore, they're no longer available from LEGO. So if you want one, go ahead and pick it up. The only downside, which leads me to my final point, is that this is between $450 and $500 US. That, of course, is before uh, the eBay inflation and everything that we know exists and goes on. So again, that's why I said if you want one, go ahead and splurge now uh, before you can't get one for anything less than 1000 bucks or so. 3,854 pieces to be exact, including several uh, remote controls or motors, as LEGO calls them. The scale is not specified on this dozer, but I can tell you this. It is larger than 124 scale because I have a couple D11 dozers in 124 scale. Uh, you can see this takes up the entire review table. It is just a massive piece. Uh, to give you an idea of just how big this is... I am bringing out the measuring tape right now, and uh, we'll measure it end to end, and that'll give you a good idea. Okay, so this is going to be in inches. So from the back of the ripper to the very front of the blade, you're looking at approximately 20 inches. Uh, so that's pretty sizable, absolutely. And then from the bottom to the top most portion of the cab, you're looking at about a foot, maybe a little bit more, give or take. Uh, and there's your there's your measurements. As for how big a cross it is, allow me to take up your entire screen. We'll just go end to end from the blade. So again, in inches, about 15 inches across. You can see that there. So an absolute massive model. You're going to need a lot of space in your display cabinet. Uh, not only in terms of actual weight, because for a plastic Lego kit, it actually is pretty heavy. Uh, but it's also very, very wide and very long, so please take those factors into account. All right, let's go ahead and get into some of the details. All of the stickers on here um, are just that. They're stickers. They're not decals. They use them to bring out a lot of detail. So I'll point out here, you can see D11 right here. You can zoom in on that. There we go. Uh, you can see D11. You can also see that the grill perforations are not perforated. They are done with the effect of stickers, so that looks quite quite good, in my opinion. Uh, moving towards the back, you can't see it very well, but right here is a cat logo. Moving to the front, again, you may not be able to see this, but they do have the new cat um, Modern Hex logo at the top of the grill, so you'll see that when I put the blade down. Over here, same for decals. Uh, warning decal here. Um, which again, these aren't really decals, they're stickers, and uh, the new Cat Modern Hex. The box markets this as a D11T. Technically, this is not a D11T, this is the D11 Next Gen. Uh, so that's somehow got past Lego in the marketing department and Cat, but it is what it is. And then there's a Cat logo here. That's basically it for the stickers. Everything else is done uh, by the help of Lego pieces. So... Let's now get into um, the other features on the model. We have a ladder that will fold down. Here are your tracks. Each of these track pads are individually linked. I don't remember the number on each side, but it is obviously quite uh, substantial. Again, we're zooming out here just a bit. You have the fire suppression systems on the back, here and here. These are your tanks. 
obviously a large single shank ripper. The protection railing around the cab, uh, you do have opening doors, which is great, not only to get inside the cab, they open on both sides, but you also have opening engine compartment doors, which is super cool. And that's important because you can actually see these pistons, these yellow pieces here on the side of the block, they will go up and down as the tractor is moving. Um, and then also this red piece, which you can probably barely just see here, the tracks are covering it, uh, but there's a large, there's a large red actuator piece right here. And every time you want to use the vehicle, at least its remote control functions, you have to activate that piece uh, to turn on your machine. Okay, we'll go along to the other side just for being complete as we can possibly be. Opening door on this side. Uh, as well. There you go. Make sure it doesn't catch on the tracks. And again, here's the opening door for the cab. Looking at the blade, the blade alone takes approximately uh, two to three hours to do. You can see all of the different pieces that make up the blade. The silver or gray pieces, that's your cutting edge. Uh, and LEGO has done a great job, I think, in trying to recreate the visibility perforations on top of the blade itself. I'm going to pick you up here for just a moment so we can see the cylinders. There, there's your lights on the, the cylinders. There's the cat logo that I said you probably couldn't see in the grill. Uh, and your twin exhaust, your twin air cleaners, your different working lights. This is, without question, um, one of the most... And I'm no LEGO expert, but I can tell you I'm friends with people that I would absolutely say they're Lego experts. They probably have, uh, some of them have as much as 500 Lego kits in their house. Um, this was the most complicated and detail-oriented build um, that is out there at the time. So, again, this took us about a year and a half to build, but there are eight different steps. Um, and... Each step has multiple bags full of parts. So by the time you get done sorting colors, uh, that's probably an hour alone. Um, honestly, the, the only menial task was really just doing the track links. Everything else, uh, you actually had to pay attention to what you're doing because if you screw up or miss one step, you may not realize it until you're farther along in the build, and that can become quite frustrating when you're trying to backtrack and figure out where things are. Okay. Enough talking about the details, let's now get into some of the functions. So what you will need is a smart device, or in this case I'm using my old cell phone. Uh, you need to load up the LEGO Control Plus Technic app, so it'll load right here. Alright, you can see all of the different... I don't have all of these, obviously, it just automatically loads up, but the D11 does come online immediately. So we click that, we click Drive. The first time you do this, you'll have to calibrate everything. Um, and then there you go, it tells you to activate the red lever. So that's what we're going to do now. So now that's activated. It says connecting. There you go. You can hear an audible engine noise going, and it'll say connected. You can control this one of two ways. So you can go back if you want for the one-touch control, uh, which, which I personally am not a big fan of. Um, but it just goes through step by step how to uh, how to operate the thing. So you and it goes through different ways you can do it. So we're gonna we're gonna check these automatically and go back to the other way. So we'll do this. Okay. So there's the control. So these are going to be how you turn the tractor. This is your ladder. So let's drop the ladder down. As you can see above me the power access stairs is now coming down. Conversely, we can bring it back up. All right. Also, here is your throttle. You can control how fast you're going, and obviously this is reverse uh, drive, your horn button. Uh, and then this is your blade tilt forward and back and then blade up and down so let's go through some of the uh, features here we're going to go and drive which is actually reverse there you go so there's reverse switch it back to drive now it is driving okay now we're going to 
turn it a bit towards you. So now we're spinning around as it gets stuck on the door or on the wall. There we go. Seeing back out here just a little bit more. I apologize about the table, but hey, you got to work with what space constraints you have sometimes. Okay, so now we've got it facing you, at least towards the rippers facing you. So now we're going to hit the down ripper button. Uh, one negative thing about it is that the ripper will not touch the ground. That's as far down as it will go. You can see I can fit a Sharpie marker underneath here with plenty of room. So it doesn't go below grade and you can't rip anything, uh, which is a bit disappointing. That said, at least the ripper does work, which I appreciate. Now, draw your attention before we go to the blade at the yellow pieces here. So as I drive this, you see the yellow pieces going up and down? That's pretty cool. That's a detail that I like a lot that they didn't have to incorporate, uh, but it is quite neat that they did that. All right, to save time, we're going to go face towards you. And now we're going to do some blade functionality. It is very slow with the blade because it's so large, but as you can see right now, I am lowering it. All right, now we're going to raise it back up. And that's, again, just using this control piece right here. Okay, now I want to tilt the blade. So you click this button, and you see how this turns horizontally? Now, we're going to control the... There's tilt forward. It's tilting forward. We'll move this on its side so you can see it better. And there's tilt backwards. And while it's on its side here, we will do uh, up and down again. Just to show you how that works from the side. There we go. Going down. You can see the, the gears moving as well here. And there you go, it's down. So, basically, that is an overview of the working features for the LEGO Technic Cat D11. Um, this is, guys, this is an incredible model. Um, it is absolutely a feat of engineering. The fact that a lot of this stuff actually works, pardon my finger there, uh, a lot of this stuff is actually working, and it's a Lego model, so of course there's going to be design limitations in the way that things look. But overall, I think they did a pretty decent job. You, w you will have some extra parts, so this is my extra parts bag. There's actually not much, but it is helpful that they include at least a couple spare track links should yours break. Now, you want to talk about instructions, all right? Here's the instructional booklet. Huge. You can probably see how thick it is, and that will get you, that's just one of the instructional booklets, and that will get you through, uh, let's see, let me be exact here before I give off a random number. So that will bring you through step 626, so you'll have the tractor mostly assembled without the cab and blade uh, and your tracks. So then you bring in book number two, which is almost as thick. Here is instructional book number two. And once you finish that, all, uh, let's see, all 1,138 steps, you should have a model that looks remarkably like a Cat D11. So lots of fun. Again, what you, what you need to know here is that if you are a heavy equipment enthusiast, if you are a Lego enthusiast, I would absolutely recommend picking this up. I've had people over here that have, well, to be truthful, most of my friends have no interest in scale models at all. doesn't matter if they're brass, die cast, Lego, whatever. Uh, but this is actually on my glass centerpiece, my, my table in my front room. Um, and people look at that thing and go, whoa, holy 
insert whatever word that is cool you know tell me a little bit more about it and then once i tell them that it's remote controlled and you can play with it with a phone um they just go to town and, and have a lot of fun with it so again conversation starter and attention getter for sure uh but a must own if you are a fan of cat dozers uh, heavy equipment or if you like really in-depth technical lego technic kits again huge thanks to my buddy chris uh, who spent the last year and a half with me getting this thing built and assembled and ready for you. If you guys have any questions or comments that I didn't address already in this video, please ask me down in the comment section below. Until next time, take care, be well. I'll see you in the next review.